and welcome to Famous Gays and Lesbians, Alleged and Otherwise. I'm your host, Thomas Connolly. I happen to be a gay actor, and I live in the gayest city of them all, West Hollywood, California. Now, today's episode deals with one of the biggest movie stars of all time. He was a top box office attraction for over 30 years. He was the embodiment of suave sophistication and debonair. He was masterful at both comedies and dramas. Now, who am I talking about? I'm talking about the unbelievably talented Mr. Cary Grant. And yes, this is a very controversial episode because many people don't believe that Cary Grant was gay. But I kind of see this as a civil court case. You only need a preponderance of evidence to win in a civil court case. And there's a preponderance of evidence that Cary Grant was gay. Let's take a glimpse at his phenomenal career. Now, Mr. Cary Grant headlined over 70 films, but my personal favorites are Bringing Up Baby and The Philadelphia Story with the wonderful Katherine Hepburn. Oh, and His Girl Friday with the hysterical Rosalind Russell. Now, in this film, they both play glib, fast-talking, aggressive news reporters. And there's such a phenomenal comic chemistry between both Rosalind Russell and Cary Grant. And Cary Grant was also acclaimed as a great dramatic actor in such films as Charade with the marvelous Audrey Hepburn and a lot of Hitchcock films like Notorious, To Catch a Thief, Oh, and arguably the best, North by Northwest. And just what is this preponderance of evidence that Mr. Cary Grant is gay? Well, it has mostly to do with his decades-long relationship with the handsome actor, Mr. Randolph Scott. Now, while Cary Grant was the ultimate leading man and matinee idol, Randolph Scott, called Randy by his friends, had a successful yet smaller career than Cary Grant. Randolph Scott exuded a very masculine, rugged image and was cast mostly in Westerns like Hangman's Knot and Ride the Country. Cary Grant and Randolph Scott met on the set of the 1932 film, Hot Saturday. According to many biographers, the attraction between Cary Grant and Randolph Scott was mutual, and they began spending all their free time together. Their friends from that period said that the two handsome young actors lived together openly and began traveling in Hollywood's elite gay yet secretive social circles. A few years before, Cary Grant had lived openly with gay designer Ori Kelly. Now, it must be noted that this was a time when it was illegal to be a practicing gay man or lesbian woman in our country. The American Psychiatric Association, known as the APA, classified homosexuality and lesbianism as a mental disorder and a sexual perversion. Not to mention that most religions labeled homosexuality as an abomination and a disgrace. And this was even magnified for famous actors like Cary Grant and Randolph Scott. A closeted gay journalist back then named Ben Maddox wrote a profile of them in Modern Screen in 1933. The photos show Cary Grant and Randolph Scott sharing a cozy and domestic life at the beach. Maddox now, Maddox used code words such as lavender, cottage, and camp that would identify them as a couple to the gay readers. These photos of them wearing aprons were apparently too much for heterosexual columnists who ridiculed the two men and implied that there was, quote unquote, something between them. Oh, my Lord, what could that be? 
Now, the studio insisted that Cary Grant get married in 1934 to kill these gay rumors that were swirling around both of them. And so Cary Grant went along with it. And he married a woman named Virginia Sherrill in 1934 to disastrous results. The marriage only lasted 13 months, and she claimed severe physical abuse. Now, most revealing, Virginia Sherrill said, Cary Grant was mostly drunk and sullen and never showed any sexual interest. Now, there's an unconfirmed rumor that Cary Grant actually attempted suicide at this time, but the studio hushed it all up. At any rate, Cary Grant moved right back in with Randy Scott as soon as the divorce papers were final. The studio publicity department worked overtime to plant stories about the endless stream of attractive women coming and going from their beach house, now referred to as a bachelor pad. Their good friend, actress Carol Lombard, when joking about Cary Grant's frugal, cheap nature, said, oh, their relationship is perfect. Randy pays the bills and Cary mails them. Between Cary Grant and Randolph Scott, they had seven failed marriages, which in my opinion were most likely marriages of convenience. Mr. Blackwell, the notorious fashion designer. Oh, I hope you all remember Mr. Blackwell's snarky little best dress list. Oh, this is what he said one year. Martha Stewart dresses like she's the centerfold of a farmer's almanac. Mariah Carey looked like shrink wrap cheesecake. Oh, and Madonna has gone from Avita to Velveeta. Oh, sorry, I digress. Well, Mr. Blackwell lived with Randolph Scott and Cary Grant for several months in the late 1930s. And in his memoirs, he wrote that he considered them deeply, madly in love, their devotion complete. Behind closed doors, they were warm, kind, loving, and caring, and unembarrassed about showing it. <clears throat> By the 1940s, they were no longer living together due to the pressure of the studio heads to protect their image. They only, they only made one movie together. Ironically, it's called My Favorite Wife. Now, I believe that they were lovers at this time, because get a load at what the script supervisor of My Favorite Wife, Burt Grant, had to say. He said, we shot the pool sequence at the Huntington Hotel in Pasadena. Carrie and Randolph arrived as a pair and to the total astonishment of myself, the director and the ultra macho crew, instead of taking separate suites, Carrie and Randolph moved into the same room together. Everyone looked at everyone else. It hardly seemed believable. Carrie and Randolph remained extremely close friends their entire lives. The Mater D at the Beverly Hillcrest Hotel saw both actors in the 1970s sitting in the back of the restaurant long after the place had emptied. Cary Grant and Randolph Scott were sitting alone, quietly holding hands. Well, there you have it. Cary Grant was not only one of our greatest actors, but I believe he was a gay man. Uh, the preponderance of evidence points in that direction. It's also been widely reported that Cary Grant suffered with severe bouts of depression, which led to all kinds of therapy like primal screaming and LSD. Now it's my speculation that leading a repressed closeted life caused all these problems. But duh, even I'm not that stupid. I know it would have been really difficult for Cary Grant to come out as a gay man in the 1930s and the 1940s as arguably our biggest movie star. But the sadder statement is that even nowadays, we have yet to see an A-list major actor whose name could headline and open up a film come out as gay. Hopefully, we will someday. Well, this is Thomas Connolly for Famous Gays and Lesbians, alleged and otherwise. Hey, if you like this show, could you please like and subscribe? That would really help sustain this program. Anyways, until next time, bye-bye.